lovely creatives. In today's painting class, I will teach you how to paint this starry landscape in watercolors. This is the one. It's super easy, anyone can join in, so grab yourself some painting materials and let's get started. We are painting a super easy step-by-step -step watercolor painting today. This painting tutorial is perfect for beginners. You don't need any painting experience and you can join in by using gouache or watercolors. We are painting the galaxy in watercolors today. And we're not making any sketches today. We're just diving straight in with paint. If your painting feels a little bit messy at some point, that's absolutely fine. This is a little bit of a messy painting. Just wait till the end. Once we add the white little stars, the painting will come together and it will feel ready. We start by making our entire paper a little bit wet. It doesn't need to be soaking wet, no need for big puddles, but you want your water evenly spread everywhere. I'm using thick, specific watercolor paper and my largest brush to do this. And make sure your water is clean, because if there's still a bit of paint in your water, you might get stains on your paper. You can see I taped my paper to the table. This is not a requirement, but especially when you paint wet on wet, it might help because your paper might buckle and move over the table and it just keeps everything a little bit more tidy. In this beginner's watercolor class, we are painting wet on wet. And wet on wet means that you add wet paint to wet paper. We are starting with the lightest color. This light yellow is going to be the highlight between all the clouds in the galaxy. So you can create a slightly random shape, you cannot go wrong here. Mine looks a bit like a lightning, but that's not intentional. You can see that the paint blurs out. Because the paper is wet, the paint moves over the paper and uh, has a bit of a mind of its own. It's a very freeing and loose way of painting. Make sure you clean your brush properly between you using different colors. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow ochre. You don't need yellow oak, you can go straight in with blues and greens. But I like to mix it up a little bit. Add some warmer colors in my painting. You can see that that yellow color blurs out with that lighter yellow. This is because the paper is wet and the colors mix up together automatically. I really, really love painting in watercolors this way. This wet on wet technique always is so much fun and I love the fact that the paint has a bit of a mind of its own and you can create some unexpected shapes and textures and it's just such a relaxing way of painting. So don't worry about creating something that's perfect and just have fun with it in the moment. Feel free to experiment with colors a little bit here. So I'm adding some reds and some warmer colors. Because the paper is wet, everything blends in together. This is just a colorful background layer, so don't be shy. Have a little bit of fun here. Now it's time for my first layer of blue. This is the main color of the sky, but I'm going to go over with much darker colors later, so this is just a base color. Again, I don't mind if it blurs out a little bit and mixes up with the reds or with the yellow. The paper is wet and this is just a loose base layer. You can see my paint is pretty wet as well, just a light color blue. When I've done all these blue colors, I need to make sure I let my paper dry completely. So either use a hair dryer or go make a cup of tea, wait for a moment, because for the next layer you want to make sure your paper is completely dry. If it's still a bit wet, it's going to be very hard to um, add another layer without reactivating the colors underneath. And you'll get muddy colors and a messy painting. Um, it's okay if that happens, but we're trying to avoid it. So let's make sure that we give the paper time to dry. It is up to you if you leave this layer as it is, or if you're going to add a little bit more bolder colors to it. So I decided to add a bit more purples and reds. Mixing the colors on the paper. If it's a bit too wet, you can soak it up with a bit of tissue paper. But this is up to you. How uh, bright or how light you want your colors to be is completely your own choice. So 
have a look at your painting and decide what you want to do. Remember everything you add at this stage is on wet paper, which means that the colors are going to blur out together. The first layer is now dry to the touch and I'm adding my second layer of blue. You can see I've picked a slightly darker color blue, a slightly fuller color blue, but I'm still applying my paint fairly watery. My paper is still a little bit damp, so the colors will still blend in together. You might have to add multiple layers and between each layer make sure that you let your paper dry. I stepped away from my painting for a few minutes and made myself a cup of tea and now I'm back and my painting is dry. I'm mixing up some darker blues, so I'm adding in a little bit of black with my blue. I have to be careful because black is a very overpowering color and I don't want to make my paint completely black. But it helps making a slightly darker tone of blue. And I'm going to add it to the painting parts where I want the sky to be darkest. See, there we go significantly darker than the color I used before. You can see we can still see some of the colors underneath shine through. It's not completely opaque. And with a little bit of water and a wet brush I go over the edges to soften them. This is not an, a precise process. Follow your instincts. You might want to keep a little bit more light in your painting or you might want to make uh, your painting a little bit darker, it's up to you. At the last stage when we're adding the stars, they are easiest to see on the dark parts of the painting, so we need to make sure that we at least have some really vibrant dark areas of sky when we have finished our painting. But for now, this is just the next layer, we can always add more later on. Keeping my paint a little bit transparent, Can see the colors underneath and I'm changing the shape a little bit. There's a little bit of a puddle there, my paper has warped a bit, so a puddle was forming there in that section. So I use a bit of tissue paper to soak that up. I will paint over that again in a moment. I do not mind getting these white marks that you get where uh, your water collects in a certain part of your painting. But if you want to avoid it, make sure that you keep your paint really even and your water application really even. There we go. Just slowly and steadily making the background darker. Have you seen these videos of the James Webb uh, telescope this week? I thought they were absolutely stunning. I really love seeing pictures of the sky and the amount of detail is just absolutely extraordinary. So if you have not seen them yet, make sure you check them out. It is what inspired me to make this picture. A lot of people who paint uh, galaxies use acrylic paint because of the opaque qualities and the vibrant colors that uh, that paint offers. But you can definitely use watercolors as well which I'm doing here. I think painting in watercolors is a lot of fun and it creates a sort of fluidity, playfulness that you can see in the night sky. So, making my picture even a bit more dark. You can see how runny and wet my paint is. This paint is a little bit granulated so you can see that the texture that it forms on the paper has a bit of granulation to it, which is something that I really love. It's a specific quality of the paint that I'm using. If you want to see a complete list of all my art supplies, um, my paints, my color pencils, my filming equipment, etc., everything that I use, you can go to my website. I have a big list uh, in my frequently asked questions where you can see everything with links to uh, yeah, different shops. I have stepped away again and my painting has dried. You can see the color has dulled a little bit in this process. And I'm going to add another layer. I really want to have this deep dark full color of the night sky. So I mixed up my 
darkest blue with a little bit of black to create this really deep dark blue, really velvety color. And I'm adding an extra layer over my picture. And you can see that my paper is really dried. My paint is not blurring out at all. But I'm softening the edges a little bit by going over it with a clean brush with a little bit of water on it. It's a great way of softening the edges. I want to make sure I have a lot of contrast in my picture. So the darks, I want them to be really dark. The yellows and the reds really vibrant. And the stars being really sparkly white. I'm only using one brush for this entire painting. I used a really large brush to wet the paper beforehand. And you could use a sponge for that as well if you prefer. But the entire painting process is just with one brush. I am really taking my time for this painting. There is no rush. And every brush stroke I take a little moment to consider if I want this area to be darker or not. I don't want you to feel rushed in any way. Because sometimes when we paint on watercolors, um, we feel like we have to be quick. But make sure you just take a breath, take your time and just let the world fade away for a moment. You can see how dark I'm going with my colors today. This is the darkest color blue that I could create. I've added quite a bit of black to it and I really want to create an intense contrast between the light colors behind. You can always soften the edges by going over it with a wet brush for a really loose effect or by going over it with a dry brush to spread out the paint. You remember when in the beginning I said that your painting might feel a bit messy at some point? That's the stage where I'm at now. And it's absolutely fine, because I have faith in everything coming together and things working out, because I have experience with these type of paintings and I know that that's what's going to happen. But if you feel a little bit overwhelmed at any point, or you think, oh, my painting looks really messy, don't worry, you can always take a little step back, let things dry, and then slowly carry on. And I promise you, once you're at the stars at the end, everything will come together and your painting will look like a starry sky that you wanted it to look like. I slowly keep adding layers of darker paint around the outsides. And I want to keep some areas a little bit lighter and some areas really dark. And I really want to create contrast between those two uh, parts of the painting. And I want to make sure I don't cover all the yellow and reds because I want that to shine through. So you can see, slowly and slowly I'm making my colors darker. I love the texture and the shapes that the watercolor creates. See, I add a little bit extra water here and there to give uh, these edges a bit of softness. But I'm really trying to make, especially the outside and these dark sort of sky areas where there's no lights, to make them really deep and dark. So I'm mixing quite a bit of black with my blue to do that. And here and there I add some lighter blue as well. You can play around by adding a little bit of black with your blues. It makes it a really deep dark blue. You can see I'm adding some lighter blues as well just to um, create some contrast between the darks and the lights of the sky. And not all of this painting is planned out. I just add the paint where I feel that it's right in the moment. It doesn't matter if the middle is um, more dark or if there's more reds in there or you can really um, layer it up and go with your own instinct. This is a very mindful painting and I want you to do what feels right in the moment. Don't worry too much about the final results. See, I'm adding another layer of dark paint just on the outside and slowly I start to get a bit more of that tunnel effect. The idea that we can look in, um, yeah, in between those dark shapes and that there's a whole depth of layers underneath and that's the effect that I'm going for today. You can see my painting water is getting very grubby, very dirty. I would recommend if you have space to maybe use two cups of water, one to clean your brush on and then one to paint with. I was a little bit lazy today and I only used one cup. But 
two cups sometimes works a little bit better, especially with all these dark colors. It stains your water very, very, very fast. Adding even more dark paint. Maybe making the edges a little bit sharper here and there. And my paint underneath is still quite wet. I have not given this layer any time to dry yet. So this watercolor painting, um, I think the more water you use, the looser your painting is going to be. And if you um, want to play it a little bit more safe, make sure you give it time to dry in between. I'm adding a little bit more pink in the sky. And I added quite a lot of white in this uh, pink color. So I use red with white to make um, pink. You can see it mixes up with the black a little bit. I'm trying to create really, um, yeah, that effect of of different sort of gases and um, metals and all these different colors in the sky and really want it sort of to twirl and to yeah to create these interesting shapes. There you go. I've put my brush down and I've let my painting dry and I've added white um, little dots with white gouache. You can see I've done quite a few already. So what I do is I mix white gouache with a little bit of water and then add splashes of white paint on top of my painting. You can also just with really lightly add little dots with the tip of your brush. So use a small brush for this. And you want your, um, your paint to be relatively diluted with some water so you can make splashes quite easily. Maybe add some bigger stars here and there as well. If you don't have any white gouache, you can also use a white marker or a white gel pen. Just make sure that your layers underneath are completely dry. I really made sure that everything was completely dry, because otherwise the white mixes up with the colors underneath and that doesn't work. So be a bit patient and only add the white once everything else is dry. I can't stress that enough. You can see the white stars really make it look like a sky. Before that it looks a bit like a messy abstract painting and as soon as you add the, add the stars your painting comes together. This is the most fun part of this painting, adding the stars. I really want to see what you're making as well. So if you joined in and you're painting with me, make sure that uh, if you share any of your work on social media that you tag me in it because I love seeing what people create. You can uh, tag me at, at making some musings. Take the tape off. I share weekly painting videos on this channel, painting and drawing videos. So make sure you subscribe and also that you click on that little bell so you get an update every time I post a video. I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. And I hope to see you around soon. So thank you so much. Make sure you look after yourself and I'll see you next week.